What do all these things have in common? Your car, your house, your garden, your dream holiday, your career, your ambitions for the future, your children or grandchildren, your uh, popularity, your uh, self-respect. What do they all have in common? Well, I guess you could uh, answer that in a number of different ways. But one thing that they all have in common is that all of them are not God. And yet all of them might become for you, for me, a God, if we're not careful. Uh, we are inclined as human beings to set up things in place of God, whether it's things that we just think about all the time, things that we dream about, things that we invest a lot of uh, time and money and uh, emotion in. Uh, those will be, if we're not careful, our God. And God says, you should have no other gods before me. Uh, if we set something up to be God instead of God, then uh, the Bible's technical term for that is that's an idol. And to worship that idol is idolatry. That's a theme of a lot of the Old Testament. And this week in Thought for the Day, we're going to look at uh, seven chapters in the book of Isaiah where idolatry is particularly talked about. I think in a slightly, slightly uh, humorous, slightly tongue-in-cheek way, slightly mocking. Uh, the point is made for us by the humour of what comes across, but the point made is a very, very serious one. And by the way, it's not just in the Old Testament that we find references to idols. In fact, our own John the Evangelist, little cheer for John after whom our church is named, John, in the last verse of his first letter, writes this simple command to his readers, the early Christian community. He says, Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Don't worship that something. Don't worship something that is not God. Here's what Isaiah says, middle of Isaiah chapter 40. With whom will you compare God? To what image will you liken him? As for an idol, a metal worker casts it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions silver chains for it. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. And its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. It's a great point, isn't it? A great point about the great God. You see, God is great. And he says in this passage that there is no equal to God. Uh, no matter what we make our idol, whether we make it out of a piece of wood or silver or gold, as in this passage, literal, uh, physical idols, or whether we uh, uh, choose our, our, our dream thing, whatever it is, whether that's car or house or holiday or whatever, future for your grandchildren. If we make that into our idol, how great is that compared to God? God who looks on the earth and looks at people moving around, even the princes and the rulers of the world, and he says, you know, you guys just look like grasshoppers to me. Uh, if I just, you know, stick my finger on you, you've gone. God is great. Idolatry at its heart is foolish. It is senseless. We're taking something very, very small and saying it's great. Now, only God is great, and therefore only he is to be worshipped as God. John Calvin, the 16th century reformer, um, uh, one of the uh, fathers, you might say, of the Protestant church in Europe. Calvin wrote this very uh, wise um, explanation. He says, the human heart is a perpetual idol factory. In other words, we don't need to use our hands to create an idol. We're coming up with them all the time. 
in our hearts, whatever we decide, we love, whatever we decide is great for us, whether that's this day, this week, this month, this year, these 10 years, it's an idol factory, the heart. And we've got to be very, very careful that we don't simply worship whatever things we are going after. God is great. He alone is to be praised. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the warnings in the scriptures against idolatry. And we are sorry that we do tend to worship things uh, which are not, your cre- not uh, the creator, but uh, your creation. Uh, we pray this week as we think about idolatry and how foolish it is that we may have a better appreciation of you and that we may see running after these things which are not God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's the plan for this week. A little bit of Isaiah each day as we think about the theme of idolatry and no other gods. Hope you can join me tomorrow. God bless you and have a great day.